Welcome to Electronline. Our next example deals with a similar situation as before, but here we have the rope wrapped around the peg one and a half times. We have a mass, let's say, equals to 10 kilograms on this side, and we're going to try to find three things. First of all, the force required to start lifting M1. What is the maximum force by which we can pull on this side before M1 begins to move up? Once we overcome the static coefficient of friction or the static friction, then of course we have kinetic friction. Then what we need to do is find the force required to keep M1 moving up at a constant speed, which is going to be less than the force required to get it moving. And finally, what if we reverse things and we allow M1 to slide down or at least keep it from sliding down? What's the force required on this side to keep M1 from sliding down? So those are the three things we're trying to answer. For all three, we're going to use the same equation. We start with T2 divided by T1 is equal to E to the mu in the first case. So for part A, we're going to use mu sub S times the angle beta. Since we're looking for T2, we can write that T2 is equal to T1 E to the mu sub S times beta. And so this will be equal to T1 is going to be the weight of M1 would be 10 kilograms times the acceleration due to gravity, 9.8 meters per second squared. And we multiply that times e to the 0 0.3, because we're going to use coefficient of static friction, times the angle three, well, one and a half times around the peg, that would be three pi radians. Okay, let's see what the force is in this case. 0.3 times three, times pi, make that the exponent of E, times 98, and that will require a force of 1,656 newtons. Notice that's quite a bit of force. With an object that only has a mass of 10 kilograms, it requires quite a bit of force to start moving it up if the rope is wrapped one and a half times around the peg and the coefficient of static friction is 0.3 you can see the advantages of pulleys, which would eliminate that friction, of course. Now let's see what it would take to keep M1 moving upwards once we've exceeded the force required to overcome the coefficient of static friction. Now you would think that since there's such a small difference between the static coefficient of friction and the kinetic coefficient of friction, that it wouldn't drop by that much. But let's find out. So for part B, we have T2 is equal to T1 times e to the mu sub k. Now we use a coefficient of kinetic friction times beta. So this becomes 10 times 9.8 times e to the 0 0.25 instead of 0 0.3 times still one and a half times wrapped around. So this becomes 0.25 times 3 times pi, use that as exponent, and times 98. And notice at this point, it's 1,034 newtons. So quite a drop by changing from static to kinetic coefficient of friction. So you can see that if you have a rope wrapped around the peg, once you get the thing moving, then everything will start moving much more easily with a lot less force required. Now for the third part, we need to figure out what force is required here to keep M1 from going down. All right, so in this case, we're going to have to reverse the order. This now becomes T2, and this now becomes T1. And so for part C, we can now say that since now we're looking for T1, we can say that T1 is equal to T2 divided by e to the mu sub s times beta, the angle that the rope is wrapped around the peg with. So this is equal to T2, that would be well, in this case, since this is T2, that would be 10 kilograms, the weight of that object times 9.8, and divide that by E to the, again, we go to the static coefficient of friction, the 0 0.3, because nothing is moving yet, and 3 pi for one and a half turns. So 0 0.3 times 3 times pi, make that the exponent, bring that to the numerator, and times 98 equals, and it only will require 5.8 newtons.
So you can see that since there's so much friction between a rope and a peg like that, we only need a force of 5.8 newtons to keep a 10 kilogram object from sliding down. Since it's not a pulley, there's lots of friction there and not a lot of force required to keep it from sliding. And that's how it's done.